Welcome to Integrated Math 3. On this episode, Stevenson will demonstrate... Let's begin factoring quadratics when a is 1. So really quickly, let's review what it means for a quadratic equation. Now, when you're factoring quadratics, the quadratic is typically in standard form. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a general method that I like to use when I factor. However, if you don't prefer this method and you would like another one, come into tutoring and I'll show you another method. So here's a method you could use for factoring. You're going to multiply the first coefficient, time, the leading coefficient, times the constant. And whatever the number b is down here, plus or minus, you bring it down here. So then you're trying to figure out what two numbers multiply to give you the number up top, but then combine to give you the number on the bottom. And once you do that, then you're going to draw a box. So now that you have your box, you're going to put the leading term ax squared in the first box and the constant goes in the last box. What goes in the other two boxes are the numbers you come up with there. And what you're going to do is you're going to factor out GCFs of each row and column. So the GCF is just the greatest common factor. Let's look at an example to illustrate this. So my first step is to figure out what is my what are my ABCs. Remember your ABCs are the numbers in front. So in this case A is 1, B is 1, C is negative 6. Next I want to do my little factor cross here, or my little X factor and I want to figure out what the products are. So I'm going to do a times c, so 1 times 6 is 6, and then whatever b is, in this case it's positive 1, it's going to go in the bottom. Now my product is negative, but my sum is positive. What that tells me is my signs here have to be opposite. The reason for that is because a positive times a negative is a negative, but when I add these two together, the signs are different, I can end up with a positive result. So what can these numbers be? Well, let's focus on six. What are the different products I can make six? I could do one times six, I could do two times three. Which of those pairs will have a difference of one? The answer is two and three. So three has to be the larger, the positive, and the two has to be negative. So check, three take away two is one. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We now have our pieces, so let's make the box. Now when you fill in these middle ones here, these are linear terms. So whatever that number is, you're just going to combine it with an x. It does not matter what order this is. So for example, I could have put negative 2x in this box and 3x in this box. Now I'm going to factor out the GCFs. So the GCF between x squared and negative 2x is x. The GCF, so what number times x is x squared? x. x times, so what number here when I multiply by x will give me 3x? Three, 3. Now look over here. Some number in 3 when I multiply them together, I get negative 6. Answer is negative 2. The last box that's left over is always your check. Two, uh, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. So you can see f of x, now factors, take what's on top, x minus 2, and on the side, x plus 3. And there it is in factored form. So my first step again is to identify my ABCs. So A is 1, B is negative 9, C is 20. Next let's do our factor cross. A times C is 20, so 1 times 20 is 20. The number that's b goes in the bottom here. Now my product is positive, which means when, when you multiply two numbers, my signs must be the same. So it's either going to be a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. Now let's look at the bottom number. The bottom number needs to be negative, so what that tells me is my two numbers here are going to be both negative. Now let's figure out our products. How many different products can we make use to make 20? We could do 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Which of those products can combine to give you 9? Hopefully you see it's 4 and 5. Now in this example it doesn't matter which one 
is in which spot because they're both negative. In the previous example, it mattered which one was positive and which one was negative because I wanted my end result to be positive. So let's check. Negative four times negative five is positive 20. Negative four plus negative five is negative nine. Now we have our pieces, so let's make our factor box. Now again, I'm gonna put in my two numbers here into these boxes in any order, and they're gonna become linear terms. What that means is, is you put an X next to it, just like that. Now we factor out the GCFs. So what is the GCF in this row between X squared and negative five X? It's a single X. Now we're gonna use areas to find the missing sides. X times something is X squared, X. X times some number down here is gonna give me negative four X negative four. Negative four times something over here is going to give me positive 20. It's negative five. And then x times negative five is negative five x. That's our check. So now we can write our factored form. 